story tonight to my wife, which is not a scientist, not a politician, not a layman, but just an ordinary housewife. She has to understand it. And you're feeling so happy, no sorrows for the day. Life is that beautiful when you're into PTA. The birds are singing loudly and the sun is always shining bright. This is the work of your dreams, this is the time of your life. Technology assessment is a wrong approach because it's just um, too late. Uh, because it says hey, here are the ones who do technology and these are little children playing in the laboratory and we need to tell them what to do. Yeah. So it puts you in a very awkward position because they first do the stuff and then you evaluate them. It says it's a way to say hey, basically without, without our, our control you would do bad things. Yeah. I agree with my colleague Ferreira. You spoke of the past, and we need to forecast the future. What we need is visions, and there I agree with Dr. Brown. We need clear, new, and even radical visions. I was afraid that it would be uh, a lot of men in grey suits uh, agreeing with each other. So I was very pleased that we had a keynote speaker who was uh, a bit more uh, on the edge and maybe not uh, quite what everybody, he was provocative. People are here uh, because they think they are ethically better than the, uh, the scientists and the engineers who make the technique and, uh, and they, were, they say, oh, technology is bad and we need to take care of you because we are the good ones. We are ethical and you are presumably unethical, so we need to take care of you. I don't think that scientists can do everything by themselves, but um, technology assessment should start earlier. It should not be a technology assessment, it should be a design of technology assessment at the beginning. So it, we can start with working together at the beginning in the design of the science and the engineering, then we could come up with far better product quality with far better innovation, holistically good innovation, then we would no longer talk about ethics, we would just talk about beauty or about quality. On the first day, Michael Braungart starts by insulting all you girls and boys. Why are you cloning people if you can't take the toxins out of toys? Two kilo lips thick on And I think the most important thing, again, that I have learned is that as a scientist, I can contribute to making policy, but science does not decide policy. And I really think that's the way it should be. For me, as a politician, not only scientific results are very important, but as much as scientific results, also when I speak to a parent about problems regarding drugs or alcohol or smoking, for me it's as much as important, even when I'm a scientist, as reading a scientific report, those kind of information are very important for doing my work. Well, I think scientists first need to really educate themselves into what the concerns and terms of the debate are, and then secondly, find ways to communicate honestly our own biases and perspectives 
as well as attempting to answer the questions the public has. Too often, I think, scientists have an idea of what the questions should be, and so we don't really listen to what the questions are. She's the ass in her wonderland. No lead at all and independent. So if it's necessary, she shoots the American government. We all have nano dots. It's true that there are a lot of risks, there are a lot of carcinogens, there are a lot of horrible things out there. But here we are, sitting in the wealthiest part of the world, in the wealthiest century that we've ever known, where our life expectancy is longer than it ever has been in the past. Um, yes, that life expectancy has been created by those technologies. And I've heard very little about the hopes, the dreams, the possibilities that those technologies might actually help us create a better and more flourishing future. That dream of science seems to have uh, faded away, and I think that's kind of rather sad. What can I know? What must I do? What may I hope for? Are now posed in terms of our vital somatic existence, our genome, our neurotransmitters, our biology. We understand ourselves in biological terms, at least partly, and our expectations of ourselves are shaped in terms of the maintenance of that biological, uh, biological vitality in ourselves. Well, to me, it is um, for, of utmost importance that um, society as a whole, uh, so that includes Parliament, but that also includes the medical doctors or the scientists um, or the patients, uh, are involved in the debate surrounding uh, these new uh, technological possibilities. Um, but when it comes to uh, regulation, um, of course, government still has an important role in this. I think that the kinds of uh, advocacy organizations that one sees developing around health are very, very good examples of the kind of shift that's one ha that one is seeing in a citizen's involvement. Uh, here are people who are passionately committed, who are scientifically literate, and who engage as a matter of their own life and death and those of their loved ones uh, with, the, uh, with technological developments. The challenge, I think, is to find a way both of spreading that participation to groups that don't normally participate and secondly to see the ways in which one might reconcile that passionate articulation of sectional interests with a kind of democratic interest in the equal distribution of, uh, of uh, resources and healthcare services. What can we hope for or dream of when Nicholas Rose speeches at his ball and after his long march to sociology uh, I was asked to talk about uh, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change as a mechanism, uh, but also what international scientific assessment can do. How can it explore international complex, what in political science I believe they call unstructured problems? What I think we can learn from the IPCC is you are able in such a process to bring a lot of disciplines together. Let's say when the going really gets rough, when it goes, to, when this is about ethics and values, I think it's, it's very hard to have an IPCC-like process and reach consensus. Um, I mean, the intergovernmental panel, the intergovernmental setting makes it that the, the results are used in governments, but it's not a public debate. Well, how this group of uh, parliamentary and technology assessment is trying to bridge um, national parliamentary interest with global issues and in fact its conclusion that this is not so easy. It's very often about creating a sense of urgency, that there is something going on which needs much more and more attention and uh, the way of doing it is not by writing thick reports and so on, it's, not, it's nothing. It's much better than in a, to do it in other ways. Going to the media, uh, taking care of artists who are uh, presenting the problem in another way which is much much more uh, coming to the emotions and to the uh, to the to the heart of human beings that's I think it's very important for technology assessments to to be involved with that they shouldn't to believe too hard in reason